Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Phil Reed podcast. I have another very special guest with me on my sofa today. It is the wonderful, amazing Michael. Um, I would love actually for you to give yourself a little bit of an intro. If you, if you may, is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah. My name's Michael Gunnin. I'm a former international swimmer. I've been very lucky along my journey. I've got dual nationality with mm. Jamaica and Great Britain. And I've been very lucky and fortunate. I've been able to represent both of my home countries. So kind of representing Great Britain for 10 years, um, wow. kind of junior career going into my senior career. And then started to represent Jamaica mm. for like the last six years of my, my swimming career. Yeah. So um, yeah, been around, been two world championships um a massive advocate for lgbt rights as you know representing yes guys representing, representing. <laughs> that's that's amazing like if i didn't know you and i had to look at your structure i'd be like swimmer yeah broad shoulders wide back it's built for us <laughs> built for what size feet are you nine. Oh, that's kind of average Not too bad it's kind of about big hands average ish does that even is that a myth or does that help with swimming I think it definitely helps. It must yeah. do, right? I think me being a butterfly swimmer, I don't have to be really tall and, you know, yes, I can be quite point. short and big back and that's yeah. enough. Yeah. But it just depends on what events you do, really. And that was actually my next question. We'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get this done first and then we'll go into more, inter- I say more interesting, but the deeper stuff, not that deep. But um, your swimming career, your favourite, you just said it then, butterfly. Is, yeah. that, is that your, are you best at butterfly and that's why you race butterfly or...? Yeah, you know what? When I was kind of growing up, I'd done all of the events. Mm. I'd done like the 400 meters medleys, so like butterfly, no backstroke, brush, yeah, yeah, yeah. and crawl. So um, I just done it all when I was younger, really. And yeah. butterfly chose me. I was yeah. always way ahead on the butterfly. Breaststroke, not so much. I was mm. always a little bit behind, but I always caught up on the freestyle again. So, mm. but yeah, I think butterfly and freestyle are like my main ones that I love. Yeah. Butterfly strikes me as the, the stroke that is the most technical yeah. and most complex to 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 really nail and hardest for a beginner for for sure right Is yeah that, would, you, would you agree oh i think it's so hard to teach an adult to do butterfly <laughs> i feel very gifted that i learned when, from a very young age that now mm. it just kind of comes naturally to me yeah. and people say you know why butterfly but again it's just it's nice for me it's so easy it's not yeah. easy but it's easier for me because i've done it for so long i guess yeah and you i've seen videos of you swimming and you you literally just look like you're gliding like a penguin through water <laughs> it's incredible it really is and i suppose every every professional swimmer looks amazing when they swim but um 10 years for great britain yes that's mad through the age groups and then yeah into the senior as well yeah just wow. like the start of the senior um yeah very lucky mm. um i feel like most people choose other things and you know i juggled a degree in early childhood studies as well wow. so um i just loved it you mm. know swimming was just that ball of energy that i loved going being mm. with my teammates representing traveling the world and just yeah, yeah just living my best self really one thing i understand about swimming and the, the practice and training side of things is the more hours you're in the pool the better you'll eventually be is that is that right yeah i think so you know what i think lockdown actually taught us a lot because mm. obviously we had to stop we had a little bit of time out mm. and you know we were still performing okay and i think you know even though we wasn't in you know i normally swim 80k a week 85k wow. a week so i think lockdown wow. was nice to just have a bit of a break just and chill a little bit yeah yeah Amazing. Where Where is it that you would, where, where were you training before you retired? Yeah, I trained at the London Aquatic Centre for yeah. four years yeah. um, and then moved up to Manchester for seven years. So yeah, up north and down in London. Up north, up north, I'm from the north. Yes. Oh. I lived I lived in Manchester a couple of years ago, but originally, yeah, from from near Manchester. Um, Can you swim? I'm, I'm, I did a triathlon last year. No, just under, just over a year ago. So I can swim. Yeah. But in the pool, I'm not quick. Like I can swim, I can do distance, but I'm not like, I'm not a fast swimmer, but yeah. I know how to swim. Like I swim, I swam for like a K and a half. So like, I mean, it's all right. That's it's not good. bad. It's, but it was interesting because the first time I trained in the pool for that triathlon, I was, I did, I did two lengths and I was gone. And I quickly learned that swimming is a lot harder. It's, swimming is not appreciated by most people. Yeah. Like the difficulty of it. 
No, I think I can agree because, you know, it's such a skill to get from one side of the pool to the other. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're using every single muscle in yeah. your body that for me, mentally, physically, I think it just ticks all boxes, mm. just, you know, especially mental health wise. You know, I think so many people can just relate with swimming because you have to focus on getting yeah. from A to B rather than thinking of other things in your life. Exactly. You you have to focus on not drowning, using well, the right technique, breathing. It's it, Swimming is so unique. And I felt like swimming training helped me with like my running, like my cardiovascular was just so much more improved. Yeah. So when I went on a run, I'd, I'd feel great. I didn't, I never got tired when yeah. I was training in the pool. So yeah. it was great. I've yeah. got asthma. So I think swimming for me, yeah, really kind of helped me control my breathing and wow. my lungs. Bad asthma or? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like since swimming and kind of, the more, like when I was younger, you know, that's mm. kind of when I first had it. But when I started to swim, it just somehow helped. It's, yeah, amazing. Did you ever have any like asthma attacks at a competition or? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I've always been really good at controlling my asthma attacks with obviously my pumps nearby and yeah. people kind of aware. But I think, yeah, just swimming helped me really control it. And when I felt like I was about to have one, I mm. knew what I needed to do yeah. and calm down. Yeah. And um, yeah, swimming's not good just for kind of physically. It's good for so many different things and teaching mm. you different, different skills. <laughs> I feel like not enough people swim or if you, if people train in another discipline like running or cycling or football or rugby. I, f I feel like everybody should swim. I feel, I feel like it has so many benefits and one being obviously your, your mental health because it's, it, it's a moment in time just for yourself. You can't do anything else but be with your own thoughts. And I, I hated it at first. I'm not gonna lie to you. Swimming for, for 30 minutes straight was like the most boring thing ever. And then it almost became like my meditation, my therapy for myself. Can you relate to that? Yeah, yeah. you know, I've, you know, like I said, I swim 80k a week in the pool and it, I feel like people think it's individual sport of just us going up and down a black line. But mm. I couldn't really agree because for me, it was the teammates. It was yeah. the people that I was doing it with. It was the coach that was kind of giving me encouragement or shouting mm. at me. You know, I feel like it was everything together. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I, I was doing it on my own. So maybe that's why I felt like that. But yeah, go um, to the group. I should, I, should tra I should train with other people, like join a club, right? But... Well, not, I'm not far from Stratford here, so yeah. maybe, maybe I should. I also, you know that water down there yeah. at where I live? I've I've swum in there a few times. Can you swim in there? They, wow. open, they open it up to do like an op open water swim. It's amazing. It's freezing, yeah. but it's it's very good. Um, So that's one side. The mental health side is very important. Obviously, the physical side is, is great. You increase your cardiovascular. You look great. Um, Another side to any sport, and especially you, I guess, and swimmers, the diet side. Mm. I pro everyone's probably seen these videos of like the Michael Phelps 10,000 calorie whatever and the amount of pasta and pizza he eats how true is that well I definitely didn't eat that many calories okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like some people can get away with it yeah, with fast yeah. metabolism with fast metabolisms but I couldn't really do that no. um, I could still eat what I wanted mm. um, but I never felt like I had to eat more than I'm already eating um, mm. you know energy wise we are so tired all the time because you know i don't think unless you're in that bubble and you're pushing your body to that extreme i don't think i don't even know how to explain it it's mm. you know so unique to athletes and i think that's why we kind of just have that understanding between us all you know whether it's diving and you know i've i think there was there used to be a bit of rivalry between like divers and swimmers going like who works the hardest who trains the hardest divers and swimmers yeah <laughs> do divers work hard i'm joking right. i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> but i think for me i like spent a lot of time with the divers and yeah. i saw you know even though they don't really in the pool work you know they can't afford to do loads and loads of dives and you know two and a half hour sessions in the morning two mm. and a half hour sessions in the diving pool because there's so much impact on your body but actually land work and what they do they're they're like elite level gymnasts oh honestly like, yeah. it's yeah. unreal i've seen videos and I, I i joke but the amount of work they put in is ridiculous yeah it's like flexibility balance because when they do a handstand before they do their do their i don't know would you call it a routine yeah that what you call it yeah um yeah ridiculous 
it's honestly it's um did you did you, tra- did you train with tom daly then was that the same time that he was training at the aquatic center yeah Amazing. yeah so it was nice and i felt like because you know i was i went to the university of east london and it was a you know short walk away that mm. i just spent most of my time in stratford so it yeah. was so nice to join in on their core workouts and just kind of have a friendship with people still in the sport but mm. you know in a very different sport because normally athletes don't really get to you know hang out with other sports people mm. it's normally just swimmers stick together and maybe divers stick together so it was quite nice for me to go across to the other side yeah. and um yeah see what they do and yeah because in the in the pool there's two there's an in, no, there's, there's two pools at the aquatic center right? yeah there's yeah. the main main one and then there's there's one like yeah inside. I've, never, I've never used that one that's more inside um to the left as you walk in but then there's also the diving pool which is i guess a lot deeper yeah. and you've got all, all the platforms have you ever taken the plunge from the top you know what i actually haven't i'm scared i'm a little bit scared of heights Michael, <laughs> how many times have you been in there and you've never done I know. it i have been up to the top and, and, you've look. lo- and you've looked down yeah but five enough five meters was enough for me you know I, I feel like you'd only appreciate how high it is when you actually get up there yeah because yeah. it doesn't look i mean it looks high but it doesn't look super scary yeah but i can imagine it's very yeah scary. and you know what and it's not it's one thing just jumping off but it's another thing doing what they do with Imagine. handstands and stuff honestly it's incredible how do they do that, that yeah <laughs> that is actually really talking about technical like yeah. what they what the divers do mad anyway so did you ever go to any olympics no is no that, olympics is that a bit of a regret did you not qualify or yeah so in lockdown i think you know that was when i qualified for the olympics oh. and i was really excited but then obviously or kind of prior to lockdown before we went into the covid pandemic mm. and then obviously with all of that lockdown we had to requalify and unfortunately i didn't requalify so Damn. that was really hard like mentally to kind of bounce back from and um yeah just i was in a very very low kind of place mm. but i think at the same time i kind of got a taste for what's outside of swimming and even though I carried on training and I you know done my absolute best to try and requalify I think with lockdown and the different restrictions like I couldn't travel without mm. having to isolate for 10 days and I couldn't have 10 days out of the water for, you know before a competition so yeah. it was tough but there was nothing I could have done and was that to represent Jamaica yeah so someone else was faster that took your place is that how was it a qualifying time or was it like the top two swimmers would get through to the olympics yeah so it was it was basically done on like fina points Ah. so like how many points you had kind of in that year Ah. um so unfortunately could i couldn't really compete i just didn't increase my fina points which yeah sad but that sucks a little bit yeah i you know what i believe in fate and i feel mm. like i probably wouldn't be where i am now if I'd have maybe qualified and gone like I might have still been swimming. I might Mm. have just decided to kind of change career paths altogether, but I'm still very much in the sporting world, even though I've retired and Mm. um, yeah, doing lots of fun projects. Was there a moment for you where you were just like, it's time to retire or was it a slow, long, gradual process? I think it was a long, slow, gradual process. Right. Um, I love swimming. Swimming is, you know, I learned to swim when I was four. I joined a swimming club when I was seven Mm. and it's all I've ever known. I'm 28 now. And I think I was really excited to give the world a little bit of Michael away from the pool. You know, I think everyone sees me smiling and, Mm. you know, my energy, but I just, there were so many other things I wanted to try and places I want to travel to. You know, I've traveled the world, but not seen much. All I've seen is the swimming pool and the village or the hotel. So it's, yeah, very different interesting i i don't know why but i have a feeling that you're going to come out of retirement and you're going to you're going <laughs> to compete again has that crossed your mind not at all no oh my god <laughs> i see it so often though especially like you're 28 like yeah i'm not being funny michael but prime year prime <laughs> abs- i'm 28 as well so i can say this right but do you not think it's prime time late 20s just yeah yeah no, I, you know what i do i feel like you know f- for many men like now is the peak time but you know, I think my times, you know, one fifty. I went 158 for 200 fly. Mm. Like it was such a, such a skill. Mm. And, you know, with kind of taper and with training and the, kind of the cycles, yeah. you have twice a year really where you can kind of taper and get ready for that meet. And um, I guess it was accumulation of kind of the pressure that I didn't like as well. Yeah, and, okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah, just, I'm just ready to, to leave that behind me. And yeah, if it feels right, like no one can, like no one can argue against your decision right yeah um 
But yeah, I, I, I see a lot of swimmers as they do get older, to be fair, you, naturally your body slows down and you, I guess you just lose the edge that you had. I mean, Michael Phelps was 15 when he won an Olympic medal for the first time or something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So you probably do see like these 18 year olds coming in now and you're thinking, how the hell are they doing that? And, but. Long careers. <laughs> yeah. But you've been doing it for so long as well. Like, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, and now you've entered a new world. Yes. Not put swimming behind you. It's still very much a part of your life, but you're now hosting, you're presenting, you're doing more TV work. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, you know, I think, well, when I kind of announced my retirement, um, didn't really have any plans of what I was going to do. I just wanted to have a little bit of time off just to enjoy life. You know, I think we don't really drink as athletes. So it was quite nice to have a glass of wine mm. and just do all the things that I didn't really do. Um, but then obviously the Commonwealth Games was around the corner and I was so lucky that I got to kind of host in venue and just be at a home game, still be a part of it, interviewing the athletes yeah. and kind of living that journey with them. So it was like the first, you know, major kind of competition. I was still there, which was lovely. That's really cool. <laughs> that is really cool. And I, I can imagine you're probably going to get more involved as the years go on. Hopefully yeah. you'll get more presenting jobs and you might end up going outside of swimming, outside of the sport. Yeah. Would, would you do that? Yeah, you know, I think it's like really nice to see what other opportunities. And I think I'm in a very fortunate position to, you know, there's not really a label on me. I can kind of go into anything, mm. you know, so I'm really enjoying kind of seeing what my passion is. Um, obviously, I've got a degree in early childhood studies. So, mm. you know, even maybe kids TV or, yeah. you know, I just. You'd be great at that, you know. I'd love that. Now you've said, now you've said <laughs> it. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a really, that's a really good shout. Really good shout. But no, I think, I think you're you have everything for TV. Oh, so I th thank you. On, honestly, I think you'd smash it. Do you, when you're going for TV work, is there any prejudgment on you for who you are, your background, all of that kind of stuff? Or is it kind of, are we more accepting as a, as a nation now, do you think? Yeah, I think we are open-minded and accepting. Mm. I think, you know, coming from sport, it's, I say it's not black and white, but in my eyes, really, you know, you have the competitions that you need to peek at, mm -hmm. you know, and everything's kind of set out and planned and you either achieve it or you don't. Yeah. Whereas I think with this industry and kind of media, it is very different. It's yeah. very much, sometimes there's no reason, you know, why you might not get that job or why you might not kind of step into that kind of yeah. role. I yeah. think it's just circumstance and there's so many different things. So I think that's been quite hard mm -hmm. because I like to set different goals and, when it doesn't happen, I kind of, you know, go back to the drawing board and try and figure out the reason why. But yeah. I don't think you can do this, you know, in that industry because yeah. it's it's very different. It, like you said, it's not as black and white. You could have been good enough to get a presenting job, whatever it may have been. But maybe they just were looking for someone that was just different. Yeah. Like, for example, I don't know if they're allowed to do this or say this, but maybe they were looking for a woman to put in that position. Yeah. And And, and you never know. You were good enough for it, but um that's just yeah. yeah can sometimes go against you and like with swimming if you're good enough you'll win yeah so it is a bit different it's kind of like what you see in like an office like the, the politics and the the corporate games you're probably yeah. now entering all of that where you've got to be nice to that guy because he could help you and yeah. yeah i didn't enjoy that when i worked in in, a, in an office job but welcome to that world yeah. and that side of, <laughs> of living but no you'll whatever you do you'll you'll smash it you're 28 like no, we're still young you. aren't we I, I'm, I'm still young I, yeah i feel like we are right i think in your 30s then it's like another bracket so mm. we've got two more years you know until what until we, have, we have to get our, our life next, in order our next bracket <laughs> oh no what, what's the 30s bracket then tell me well you know what a lot of people have told me that is 30s is when it happens you really? have, like okay. you just have so much more knowledge and fun but i'm having fun now so yeah i'm going to enjoy my 20s how much different <laughs> is your life now you're retired is it is it partying drinking like you said it, what, how has it how has it changed yeah oh what a question <laughs> yeah. I feel I do like a drink now yeah. you know and I think there's been some world nights okay that, good yeah that, deserved yeah you know what it's been really it's been fun yeah um but I think there's always that guilt that steps in going should I have done that or that late night because mm. you know our bodies have been so trained for so long not to do it mm. so yeah it's um it's nice yeah it's nice are you training less now and 
If so, I imagine probably a little bit. Oh my gosh, 100%. Right, okay. Yeah. So my follow-up question would have been, do you ever look at yourself and think, this is not me, What I've let myself go. Like, mm. <laughs> I don't like how I look anymore, maybe. Yeah, you know, I started to kind of do some workouts, go in the gym, but, you know, I was swimming 22 hours a week in the swimming pool. Right. And even if I went to the gym and done home workouts, nothing is going to compare to that. Something else I would like to talk about, if it's okay with you, yeah. is um, your, I guess, sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. um, are you gay, bisexual? Yes, I'm gay. Yeah. Fully gay? Yeah, I came out in 2018. Um, uh, no, so, really? Yeah. quite That's not that long ago. Quite recently. But I feel like so much has changed from then, you know, like... I think I've always been lucky that I've been able to kind of be myself to some extent. You know, I was always kind of bubbly and, yeah. you know, my personality. But I think in sport, being kind of gay or out in sport was a little bit of a taboo. You mm. know, I was worried mm. about being seen in a certain way. Yeah. Um, I'd never been on a date. And even to be fair now, like I've been on a couple of dates, but not You've never really. been on a proper date. Like, I, I never did prior to 2018. Seriously. Um, you know, Wait, so a, you were yeah. 24 at the time when you came out. Yeah. Yeah. So no wow. dating with a guy or a girl and um, went, had an opportunity to go on Courtney Axe, The By Life and just explore my sexuality. See, go on my very first date and have those that open conversation with people in the villa and such a great experience because mm. I was so naive to you know just dating and different feelings I yeah. think I'd suppressed it for so long so it was so nice just to be able to be open and talk about it why why did you suppress it because it's a big part of your life why did you feel the need to keep it keep it down I thought because people would see me as weak you know I think going to competitions I didn't want boys to feel uncomfortable changing in the oh, same okay. changing room as me mm. um i didn't want people to think that yeah i was this kind of gay boy that mm. you know wasn't strong that you know i think because my personality was very bubbly i didn't want people to kind of disguise that as me faking confidence mm. um you know i'm doing the same training as everyone else and i knew that i was i deserved to be there but I think as well, obviously another layer to that was the color of my skin and always feeling like that I needed to justify that I was good enough to be there and to kind of dominate that space. So, um, yeah, I feel like many different challenges that kind of just forced me to just reserve that side of myself. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. Um, 24 years old, is it something that you had known all your life? You had a, a feeling or did it kind of come out of nowhere someday? Yeah, you know, I had a feeling like when I was 16 or 17, but because of the, the environment I was in, I told myself that it was wrong and I almost switched off that emotion. Mm. Um, so it's, you know, really weird now that I really struggled to kind of, I guess, let people in, but, you know, al almost switch that button on again. You know, we shouldn't be able to have to just switch it off for so long. And I yeah. think, you know, even when I was with somebody really attractive, I never really had any sort of feeling towards them because really? I turned it off for so long. So I think, you know, that's what I really want to try and prevent now. People going through the same kind of journey as me and people maybe, you know, might notice their identity in sport or just, you know, everyday life. I just want people to know that it's okay yeah. and to be able to be open yeah. because, you know, it's really not nice to have to switch it off for that long. Yeah. And I think you're, you, you are a great role model for, anyone young young children young adults older people like that are struggling with their own identity and maybe coming out i think you what what i, I follow you, you on instagram and I, i've seen that you've done a great job with promoting ld lgbtq um the community and it's it's it's, it's honestly great to see it, it really is oh, I think, thank I think, you i think you do an amazing job um because there will be a lot of people that you know you'll know this there's a lot of people not just in this country but all over the world yeah that really struggle to, to, sh to share how they feel and yeah. why, why should somebody struggle to just be who they are? It's just a, it's just a weird thing to think about that someone has to hide part of their self or a massive part of their, of themselves. It's very bizarre to me. It's yeah. very, very bizarre, but credit to you for coming out when you did. No, thank was, you. Was that a, a pressured thing that you were pushed to do or was it a natural, I want to come out? Yeah, I think for me that year, I missed the Commonwealth Games team. So, 
you know, it was in Australia and I'd kind of got all the times I needed, but for some reason I wasn't selected on the team for Team Jamaica. And I think it just gave me the summer to reflect mm. on what was missing and every other part of my life was great. You know, I was performing well, but the one thing that I knew that was that question inside was my sexuality that yeah. I never had the confidence to go out and say I might be gay or I might be bisexual. Mm. Um, so I think that was the summer that I decided just to do it so publicly. I think so many people go, why did you decide to go on a reality TV show? And to be honest, I can't even remember going through that process. It was really? just one minute I was here. Next thing you know, I was in Barcelona out in this villa. But wow. I think what it was, it was, I didn't want to have to tell everyone. I didn't want to have to sit down with Every, you know, obviously I told my family, but mm. I didn't want to have to sit down with all my friends and go, I'm gay. This is who I am. I'm going on a date, you know, and it was just nice to just do it and not explain myself. On TV. <laughs> like the most grand way to do it. I guess yeah. it's like the blanket approach. Just like, here world, I'm gay, deal with it. Yeah. Instead of the sit down chat with every single person individually, I suppose that. Yeah, it was a smart, a smart way to do it. Yeah. You were, know, people, were people shocked? Um, I think a lot of people said they knew because... You know, they just was waiting for me to kind of tell them or to start the conversation, which was right. lovely. Yeah. Um, but I think I genuinely almost convinced myself that I wasn't for a long time. And I think it was just nice to go, this is me, yeah. you know, and just be authentically myself. Mm. And I remember going out to Australia for a training camp and, you know, because it aired out there as well. And they were like, we love you. And that was so many people being authentic because of me that it was just so rewarding. Yeah. We are, we're more developed in the the idea of um, being gay or bisexual or whatever it may be, but Jamaica, maybe not so much. Do you think there was any part of them knowing that about you that I guess made it harder for you to be part of their teams to qualify? Yeah. I think swimming's very black and white with kind of times that you do with being, you know, the top in the country. Yeah. Um, so I think in my mind, I was never too worried about that. Okay. Um, but I think kind of with the Commonwealth Games and things where it's not as black and white, because there wasn't, you know, kind of, there was qualifying times, but it was still Jamaica picking the team. Mm. And I think a lot of people kind of questioned why I wasn't going. But I think rather than looking too much into that, I just tried to turn it around into a positive and mm. um, just... Yeah, just try and still be authentically me and yeah. just make it really hard for them not to select me because I was performing that well. And um, But they didn't. No. I'd have kicked off. <laughs> I'd have got on the phone and been like, what the hell's going on? Why Why weren't you picked? You, surely you must have spoken to people. You, you must maybe know something. Yeah, there was only one swimmer, ah. um, which... Um, Ali Rackinson, who they took, which no, there's a there's a good Jamaica swim team, so mm. it's a real shame, really, because I feel like what is it? Was it a funding thing then? Maybe money, possibly, yeah. Is it, is, like next door, Birmingham's like it's not like they have to like house you, travel, yeah, yeah. But obviously, Gold Coast was far. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah, well, yeah. But so probably funding was a big kind of part of that, okay. but. Um, yeah, it's just a shame. It's mm. Australia. Who doesn't want to go to Australia, yeah, right? Right. <laughs> you could have put your speedos on. You could have been on the beach every day after you, after you, after you train, and that would have been amazing. Um, no, it's 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 very interesting, and it's um, I don't know why, but I feel like it's a brave thing for you to do, but it shouldn't be. It's like, oh, you're so brave for coming out at 24, but it's like, I'm kind of like, yeah, but who cares? I mean, that's my, that's my view on it because I'm so just neutral to everything yeah. and I don't care. Um, so it's just, it's just strange that it has to be made a bigger deal, but it does because of still how, how people think. Yeah. I think, you know, Christianity out in Jamaica, it was a big thing. Mm. And, you know, when I did come out publicly, Jamaica press did pick up on it and mm. did kind of you know, publish different things. And I did get so many horrible, nasty messages like death threats telling me that the shame I bring on the con their country and, you know, I shouldn't represent them, go back to Jamaica, uh, go back to Great Britain, you know, don't come back to Jamaica. So I think that was really hard. Mm. Um, but that was overwhelmed by positive comments. And, you know, I know they say don't read the negative. It's very hard not to read the negative. Hard. But um, yeah, I just, I loved the positive and the good I was doing and yeah. it just made it worthwhile. I can't imagine what it would feel like to be, um, receiving death threats 
every day on Instagram or whatever, being in the newspaper for something that you were born yeah. with. Yeah. Is that, and following on from that, do you think you, you know, the, what is it? The, the environment versus, um, it's like the, what, what is the, the, the convert, the, if you're born gay or whether it's your environment, yeah. what, what is your opinion on that? Do yeah. You think, oh, no, I think it's how you're born and the genetics. Completely. And, yeah. Yeah. I feel like maybe some part of the environment can encourage certain things yeah. and you, you might be bisexual or, or, or whatever. But I, I look at a lot of gay men that I know and from a very, very young age, they, it's clear, like very yeah. clear that, yeah, it was just, always, you know, always there. I just think it's a massive spectrum, you know, and I think mm. now identity is so large that, you know sometimes you might not even fit into one category you know it might be that you're straight but you know you're curious because you're you're not 100 percent on that kind of straight black and white line you know mm -hmm. i think and that's that's okay that's a good point yeah that's a really i think that's the same with probably everything you look yeah. at some some people that are autistic obviously there's a there's a scale to it um so you think it's the same with yeah 100 percent. you think there's a gay scale I think there's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, but yeah, um, interesting. Um, and I I follow you on, on Instagram. I see your stories and I saw something the other day that I want to ask you. Oh, okay. okay. You're worried now. You're like, oh God, what did I do? <laughs> why, why are you scared of getting your heart broken? Oh, I think society mm. has a way of just you know, life's tough, right? Everyone has positives, negatives, highs, lows, and that's just the norm. Um, and I think I try to manifest everything in my control, you know, with training, with kind of work opportunities. I make sure that I'm 100% all in. And I would love to be in a relationship. I really would. But I feel like I have to give that trust away. You know, that trust is with them and they might break my heart and there's nothing I can do about that. You know, it's just an interesting way to view a relationship. If if you had said that you had been in multiple relationships in the past and you have had your heart broken, I'd understand because you can relate to that feeling in the past. But you've never been in a relationship and you yeah. haven't dated much. Yeah. So to be scared of something that hasn't happened may never happen. Mm. It could be it could be harmful to your potential relationships in the future. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm definitely aware of that actually. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's why this year I want to go on, like last year I never went on a date. <laughs> so this year oh, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going to go on a date that's this year. I'm going to get myself out there. Um, I always said I would never join a dating app and I've joined a dating app. So. Well done, well done. <laughs> Care to share more about this? Um. Well, I saw, yeah, I've gone on three dating apps actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that grew quickly yeah yeah so i just i started on raya um, oh, okay yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. less people um which was nice mm -hmm. um and was like okay let's try hinge because loads of people have been recommending hinge for me mm -hmm. um so went on hinge too but i think tinder it was just with for me it's nice to see what's out there and yeah. what i do like and what i don't like because i don't really know you know and i yeah. think the best way for me to know mm. is to see what's out there yep um and even though it was nice kind of having lots of people like me, I still, you know, I didn't want to just settle, go, yeah, like, I think so. I think and so, yeah. <laughs> so I think with Tinder, it's very easy to see what's out there. So what you're saying is you've been on some Tinder dates? I've not been on a date yet. I've just been okay. chatting. Okay, not Tinder, <laughs> not Tinder dates, but like... <laughs> Just uh no? No. Oh, nothing. No. Yeah. Okay, just enough. chat. Just chat. Just chat. So, you know, lowering my my layers slowly. Is there is a part of you that doesn't want to let someone in because I don't know, you've you, you'll find it difficult to give your full self to somebody else? I think I've always had that kind of struggle with training because I never had the time to be in a relationship mm -hmm. because I was always traveling, training. And when I got home of the evening, I just wanted a rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, rather than going out and kind of being yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, there's been a couple of things where I've been really close with a couple of people in the past, like friendship wise. Mm. And, you know, maybe that friendship has broken down or okay. just people change. And I think the fact that that's, hurt me because i love friendships i'd do anything for like mm. friendships um i think i know how 
harder it would be if you know i did find someone who i was in love with yeah so that's the fear for me that's yeah and it's it's understandable it is understandable and you're not it's not that you're wrong for thinking that way because you have to be careful and when you do commit to love and you know give everything to somebody else you have to be 100 percent sure so it's not a bad thing a lot of people do the opposite to you and they'll just go and date everybody and like kiss a bunch of frogs and hope that the prince is there but actually it's more damaging to the person doing that than waiting yeah. patiently i guess but yeah oh, gosh it's deep today i've not spoken about this i'm so, so sorry <laughs> I'm just nosy. I just want to, I just, I just want to know. I'm, I'm, is it, is, are we okay? We're good. To, we're good. Not, we've not talked about anything too personal. No. Not yet. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I appreciate you sharing this information because again, there's so many people that will want to hear this and will relate. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. You know, I think mm. for so long, I kind of felt ashamed that I'd never been on a date or, you know, but actually it's, it's fine, you know, and I'm owning kind of being picky and not just yeah, settling. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> One of my best friends is the most picky guy ever. And I'm just like, you do you. That is what makes you you. And you'll find the person that fits you perfectly because of who you are and how, how you are with people. So be picky. Yeah. Please. I can imagine your profile is top tier. I can imagine it's elite. You've definitely got a speedo photo, <laughs> either first or second pick. Yeah, you know what? So when I first joined the dating app, when I first joined Raya, I was like, right, I don't want to put, like, I want to put about stuff about myself, mm. but I don't want to have all the speedo you know, pictures. <laughs> I just want to have me just being very normal. No one liked me. No one so I was like, right. Get the speedo. Step that. it up. <laughs> this is the real me. Yeah. But <laughs> so, it is the real you though. Yeah. It literally is. is. True. It literally is the real you. So as soon as you put the speedo pics in, showed the shoulders and the back everyone was like <laughs> this is the guy oh no it's been it's been fun it's been nice chatting to people and just being like open yeah. you know about it and talking to them figuring out that things that i feel and have worried about mm. you know they've experienced it and they've yeah. got something to share and it's nice i feel like a lot of people will like that about you that you haven't just dated the world or the whole of the country and you are fresh you're you're a new flower that's blossomed yeah so that's a good way to put it, I guess. Um, okay, we'll, we'll leave that behind. But I appreciate I appreciate you sharing. Um, what is what is next then? I know you've started your presenting career. Yeah. What, what, I guess what what is the what is the absolute goal? Ooh, um, just be behind really authentic projects that I love working on. Mm -hmm. um, I never really see myself as kind of a director, but I think you know the what the doors open for me to just try lots of different things. Um, yeah. And I think just taking myself out of my comfort zone, yeah. um, you know, like my, one of my teammates, Adam Peaty, he went on Strictly Come Dancing a couple of years ago. And then, you know, Ellie Simmons went on oh kind of last year. You're with gonna Flat East. So I just, You're gonna do Strictly. I can't dance, yeah. but actually. Perfect. Great TV. <laughs> You're going to be doing Strictly or Dancing on, on Ice. Oh, who knows? I'm just, That'd I'm ready just to challenge myself. So whatever comes my way, I'm yeah. going to. Not baffed it away. I'm but gonna... in, in the TV kind of world in some way. Yeah, you, you I'd love that. Definitely. Yeah. So you wouldn't you wouldn't go off and do something random like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something. But it, what you want it to be within? Yeah, within media, within, okay. yeah. And I guess like I'm working on a couple of documentary ideas as well, mm. which will be really exciting. Do you know what? Who's the, the female swimmer, the Syrian girl? That yes. has a Netflix documentary. Yes, the swimmers. Yeah, that's what, what? it is on Netflix. I, I can't remember her name. But you know who I mean. Yeah, I know who you mean. And I should know her name. She was a totally... Syrian, was she a Syrian refugee? Yeah. And there's a whole story. I feel like you could have a, a Netflix documentary. Yeah, it'd be very interesting. It'd be very different. Would it, would... <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd watch it. Who would play you? I know I, I know who I'm going to say, but who? which actor do you think would play you in a, in a film or documentary? Oh, it's really hard. You know. I know, straight away. Who who who's your look alike then? Let's start with that because that might help. Well, everyone says I look like Lewis Hamilton. Do you think I look like Lewis Hamilton? Oh, now you've said it a little bit. <laughs> a, a younger Lewis Hamilton. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. When he had when he had the same hair as you. Yeah. He? But there's also someone else. Um, I don't who, know. Who's an actor? I I I love Will Smith. Okay. But he might be a little bit too old to play me now. A little bit. <laughs> but who who looks like me? Michael B. Jordan. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. He, he would play you and 
he do an amazing job I'm sure <laughs> I would watch that I'd pay good money for it yeah so DM him see if see mm. if he wants to yeah true just I need I need Channing Tatum in there some way because I just yeah. need to like just be around him just just so, get him in there just so you're not in the something. film though no but I can, I'll be help producing it and true. you can be the stunt double so you can actually you can do the swimming in <laughs> the film true. very true <laughs> if anyone at Netflix is watching this which is highly <laughs> unlikely Get on this straight away. Oh. You travelled to Jamaica recently, didn't you? Yeah, last year I went back for the first time as an out person. As an openly um, gay man. Yeah, it was nice. Um, very, very worried to go back. Mm -hmm. I think security-wise, I was really worried about if I'd be safe, if people would recognise me as being that advocate. Mm. Um but, you know, like I said, like I was friends with Tom and Tom kind of fronted this documentary and it was just nice to go back with him and yeah. kind of you know, make it really authentic. Was he obviously was supporting of you and your decision and um, was was there a way that he helped you when you were over there or? Yeah, you know, what? I think we was both in the same boat. I think mm. he's such a big public figure. So everyone would recognize him anyway. And for me. People have seen me on the TV out in Jamaica. So I think we both kind of was a little bit worried. Mm. But, you know, we went with BBC One and like they really looked after us and yeah. made sure we felt safe and just filmed some really, yeah, nice, authentic stuff. So it was lovely to go back. That's amazing. Did it change your mind uh, from maybe what you thought of Jamaica post being in the newspapers and being portrayed maybe negatively? Did it change your, I guess, view on the country that, you know, is part of you? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that, kind of connected with me personally you know kind of when I was back in the UK anyway mm. saying about their sexuality and how they can't come out and I did speak to a couple of people kind of off camera that you know felt like they could trust me which yeah. was lovely um but you know it's still out there and we still felt it and yeah. you know I just feel sorry for those people that can't live their true self we are so fortunate here in the UK that you know we can so how, how did you feel it when you were there just with different people's families you yeah. know just being kind of just brushing it off as if it's not mm. important or it's mm. not relevant but it is you know it's such a big part of people's lives and mm. it's tough and it, I, I guess um sexuality is a big part of swimming and there will be some people that are gay maybe they don't fully know it like you didn't yeah um at the time or, or maybe they are trying to come out but you people like you and tom daly are like just great role models for people like i said before for, for people wanting to or feel like they can't um what about diversity in swimming do you feel like we see because let's be honest you don't often see a black guy in a swimming pool yeah i think yeah more and more we are which is so lovely mm. you know when i was younger and when i was learning to swim mm. i never saw anyone around me um mm. which you know i think personally like kind of doing a bit more research and being very much now in a position where I can try and change that I think it's all about parents of what they mm. you know, no one wants their children to fail yeah and I think sometimes when that stereotypes out there they think let's do something that you'll succeed at yeah. you know let's do well and actually yeah. swimming is for everyone you know no matter the color of your skin your bone density I don't believe well, that, that. Is, is that is that a myth <laughs> that, that black people generally have denser uh, muscle and bone so they aren't as buoyant in the water i sink in water but not <laughs> so so does some white people yeah. you know so yeah. i feel like it's not just oh, okay okay you're like this so you know and we can all you know that's what training's for i mm. train my body to move you know the fastest i possibly can across yeah. water so i think it's all changeable and it's not it's just everyone's different yeah you know and that's what makes us all up i guess it's true. It's true. No, you're you're definitely helping the diversity as well in, in swimming, I guess. Just by you being there on TV or in the pool. Yeah. And that, young, young kids seeing you, that's that's more than enough. It's that representation, yeah. you know, seeing that someone else can succeed and do well. And I think, you know, when I went to, you know, my 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 first swimming club, you know, it was nice to you know, when there was people that looked like me and that I can talk to and be open mm. to and be my authentic self to in that element as well, yeah. you know, not just my sexuality. It was so nice. Um, so we just need more people getting in the pool and succeeding. Yeah. Well, you're a super rare breed because of your sexuality and your your background, right? So yeah, you're, you're very <laughs> uncommon in a pool, I guess, or in any sport, which shouldn't, again, shouldn't be the case. Yeah. It, it just shouldn't, but here we are. Yeah. It's still, a, it's, it's, it's very bad in football. Like I can imagine if there'll be plenty of gay football, but bisexual footballers that just feel like they absolutely cannot come out because it could ruin their career. 
Yeah, it's just such a masculine sport. Right. And, you know, I went to the European final in Wembley. Oh, yeah? And automatically when we didn't win, you know, we came second. But, like, people in the crowd, you know, just shouting racism and yeah. even homophobia. Yeah. You know, there was oh, nobody who was gay out on the pitch. But, you know, already they were saying, you know, they're, they're gay. Yeah. And it was just so hard to watch because I thought if there is somebody who is gay or, you know, closeted, it's, it's... they'd never feel like they could come out because but of that but abuse. Even, even to you in the crowd hearing that, and that's, they're chanting that as an insult. And you're like, I'm gay and I own, it's, some really people tough. are just stupid and ignorant, but it's weird that that's an insult. It's, yeah, it's tough, yeah. tough. Speaking of which, um, awareness um, of the gay and the LGBTQ community, Pride Month, as you're watching this, listening to this, it is February. It is it is Pride Month. LGBT History Month. <laughs> is it not? It's Pride Month's June. Well, there's so many Wait. different Pride Months. Pride Month should be every month. Wait, it should be all year. It, it should, should be. be all the time. Wait, is it not? Oh, it's summer, isn't it? Yeah. It is summer. LGBT History Month. So how important is Pride History Month for you? We are now in Feb, which is that time. Yeah. So how, how, what does it mean for you and how important is it? Oh, I think, you know, the fact that it's there, that people can talk about it and it's okay to have that conversation in different schools. I think it's so important for people to know that, you know, this month can make a difference. Yeah. You know, we can research and educate ourselves. Even me as a, you know, out gay, you know, former athlete, like there's so much education that, oh, oh no, <laughs> it's okay. So carry on, carry on. <laughs> There's still so much I can learn in this month, which I think, you know, is great. And it's yeah. not just for me, it's for allies. It's just to make sure that people can be their best possible self. Absolutely. And you said it before, I don't know if we got it on camera, but it it shouldn't just be a month, right? It should be all year round at any point when anyone wants to talk about it or research more, you should just feel free to be able to do it. And we should promote these things all year round. Yeah. Pride month should be every month. And um, I think slowly it's starting to be more people are having those conversations all year round. Yeah. You know, there shouldn't be a coming out day. I feel yeah. like every day can be coming out, you know, when people feel yep. like they can. So yep. it's exciting. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing probably more than you wanted to. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone listening, watching will also appreciate it. Um, I personally admire everything that you've done in the professional sports scene and also with yourself coming out and being the role model that you are. So I'll say thank you on behalf of everybody you've influenced. Um, yeah. And that's, it's oh, lovely. No, thank you so much for having me on and I'll be following it. everything you're doing. Appreciate Good luck. It. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. But yeah, guys, please do make sure you go follow Michael on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as well, or yeah. get a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put all his links in the description. <laughs> Go find him, go check him out, message him. I'm sure he'll reply if you've got any questions. Um, but for today, guys, uh, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank and you. See you next time.